Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I, will, I, gonna, I will present my PhD project is, uh, in, a, in a joint PhD program between Politecnico di Torino and Instituto Nazionale di Fisica Nucleare. This presentation is on behalf of Dark Side Collaboration. Well, um, the research context in this presentation is the development of the cryogenic electronic for the underground astroparticle physics experiment. Uh, in this experiment, the novel liquids, uh, uh, like uh, liquid argon or liquid xenons, are used to, to create the scintillations when the particle arrive, arrive to the, this structure, like the dark matter particle of neutrino. So the idea of this installation is to detect this photoelectron created here by the sensor and the electronics. So the sensor and the electronics should work at, in this case, at 80, 87 Kelvin, is the temperature of this experiment, the dark side experiment. Well, first of all, um, I'm going to talk about the CMOS operation at creating the temperature in order to design, to, to realize the uh, front-end electronic. So first of all, we talk about the mismatch parameter. This figure shows the variation of the mismatch between the 300 Kelvin and 77 Kelvin. For example, in this parameter is due to the threshold voltage mismatch, show um, low variation, so it's almost negligible variation at 77 Kelvin. Um, secondly, we have this normalized transconductance is represented in this figure that we can show here that these normalized transconductants have the same behavior or the same value at 77 Kelvin and 300 Kelvin if the transistors are biased and weak inversion, I mean with the inversion coefficient lower than one. Other advantage of use the uh, cryogenic operations is the thermal noise reductions uh, because at 77 Kelvin we can obtain a reduction of around three times of the high frequency noise. Um, however, unfortunately, we have some disadvantage that with a good technique, with a good design technique, we can overcome this problem like at the threshold voltage increments and the hot carrier effects. The hot carrier effect is, 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 a, pro is a problem because it's when the carrier electron and holes jump from the channel to the silicon outside and modify the internal parameter of the transistor like at the threshold voltage. This obviously, the a modification of the threshold voltage create um, a low reliability in the transistor and eventually in the circuit. So in order to reduce the hot carry probability, in the designs we choose the channel length of the transistor at least four times higher than the minimum channel length of the technology. Like here is the 0.4 micrometer in that technology 130 nanometer. Because here we reduce this, the, this effect. Um, furthermore, uh, other advantage, other feature of the CMOS operation is the increment of the transconductance of the transistor. We can see here the, trans the transconductance of the transistor at 77 Kelvin and, and room temperature is more than twice in this case. It is due to the fact that the low field mobility of the transistor also increase from the 300 Kelvin and 77 Kelvin in tw around twice or twice or three, depending on the technology. Uh, as I said before, the increment of the threshold voltage we can see here, depending on the technology, this increment could be 100 millivolts or 200 millivolts. Well, this instructions, uh, this parameter instruction was realized, was performed in the, in the NFN Torino, uh, in, the, in the partnership with the foundry. Uh, and it was really useful in order to analyze the model, I mean the transistor at 77 Kelvin, in order to obtain a good designs, a good front-end designs, as I show later. Um, the silicon photomultiply sensor is the sensor that will be used in the experiment. In this case, also for the test of our front end, is the 24 centimeter square divided in four quadrants of the six centimeter square of a total detector capacitor of nine nanofarad and a quenching resistor of five mega ohms. This is the model, the electrical model that is used to simulate the, the sensor in the, in the CAT tool. Well, 
this is the schematic of the front end to read the circuit design. This, we can see here like the transient speed and amplifier read down um, a block of this SIPN at 6 centimeters square. That is summing up in order to obtain the 24 centimeters square. This single ended signal is extracted from the cryogenic environment or cryostat to the world data acquisition system through the optical fiber. So it's a transceiver and optical fiber to, to detect the signal from the cryogenic or the cold environment. Uh, well, here is the transistor level design of the each block here. It's a folded casco OTA with a class AB amplifier in the output in order to have a symmetrical slew rate in the output with um, well, a pole splitting compensation to have a strong stability. Uh, well, the transistor here operating in weak inversion, as I said before, uh, we present a low variation between the 300 Kelvin and 77 Kelvin of this parameter. That is good to design the, the, the circuit. Finally, uh, we can see here an external bias. These external bias are really important when we change the operation between 300 Kelvin and 77 Kelvin because, as I said before, the transconductor of the transistor when oper in the operation at 77 Kelvin increase more than twice. So this increments in the input transistor and the other transistor modify the poles and the gain bandwidth, putting the transistor in an unstable condition. So this, this bias current is used to reduce the, the, the bias current to in the trans which flow through a transistor at 77 Kelvin. Uh, well, here is the layout of the front that show previously. Is this structure here that was submitted more than one year ago? Here, this tab to implementing for test the electronic at 77 Kelvin. 77 Kelvin because you, you, we use the liquid nitrogen. That is, the element is close to the liquid argon and is cheaper and easy to to, to obtain. So we can hear, we can see here the sensor, the electronics, and a dewer full of liquid nitrogen. With, with this is a fiber that enter to provide the light inside the dewer. Here, uh, the output signal with different amplitudes because the number of photoelectrons that incide in the sensor were a difference. Um, here, the the parameter of the one photoelectron. We can see here the signal to noise ratio and the dynamic range are the most important parameter in the experiment because the minimum requirement is the equal to A, the signal to noise ratio, in order to have a resolution of the four sigma. Uh, and the dynamic range is the uh, 140 or 335 photoelectrons. That depends on the bias of the sensor. If we increase the bias of the sensor, we have a higher gain and the amplitude of the one photoelectron. Is, is higher. Mm, well, here is a histogram, a peak voltage histogram obtaining from this data acquisition. And we have here 1,000 samples. And we can see here, like uh, the first photoelectron is well separated from the peak of the baseline. So this guarantees that the, the um, the baseline is not misunderstood with a photoelectron arrival because if this, if this peak is really close to this, we can have a wrong measurement. But in this case, we, we obtain a, a good result and basically this, this prototype, this front-end electronic had been accepted or had been chosen as a baseline in the experiments. In other words, that it will be implemented or introduced in the, in the final prototype of the experiment that will be working in a couple of years. Uh, this is a dynamic range test in order to check um, how many photoelectrons can, can be processed or read out by the electronic. It's around 800 millivolts. Um, well, uh, the last year we already done all the uh, second tape out. This second tape out includes a single ending differential converter is because we, we, want in this, we want to offer a second option in the experiment. It's because, as I said previously, we are going to use the optical fiber to, to take the signal from the cryogenic cryostat or cryogenic environment. In this, with the differential signal, we can use the cable link to take the signal from the cryogenic uh, cryostat to the world data acquisition. And this is 
provide a, a higher reliability than the optical fiber because the optical fiber with a long time operation can suffer some damage. So with this state power, we want to offer or show a second option to the extraction of the signal from the cryostat. Uh, well, here we use uh, full cast code, but in this case, a full differential that is representing this block. Um, this is the layout from the second tape out. This is a post layout simulation with uh, 200 foot electron applied in the, in the inputs. Uh, again, here we have a signal to noise ratio equal to 8, but a dynamic range much higher than the, in the, the previous tape out. This step out is, is, is implemented with the other technology. The first one was with the UNC 100 nanometer. This is the L Foundry 100 nanometer. Um, well, finally, um, in order to improve the signal to noise ratio in the in the in our circuit, well, so far the signal to noise ratio result is optimal for the experiment. So it is the experiment collaboration at our happy of these results. But in order to, to see how much we can improve this signal to noise ratio, uh, well, we implement a simple real-time digital food. There is a trapezoidal digital spool shaper. It's implemented on FPGA at 125 megahertz. And here's the past implementation results. This is the histogram that I showed previously. And this is a third filtering. And uh, you can see how the standard deviation is lower in the peak after the, um, the filtering. Uh, we can see also the peak is, more, is higher with the same number of sampling. So we can see here that the filter work correctly. Uh, well, the conclusion is, well, the next generation of dark matter and neutrino experiments We'll use the SIPM, large area of SIPM. So this prototype, this front-end electronic design in the Instituto Nacional de Física Nuclear will be really useful to be implementing NETS, NETS experiment in the future. Oh, I showed the, the characteristic of the operation at cryogenic temperature have some advantages and so drawbacks that could be overcome with a good design technique. Well, that's all.